Okay, so we are talking about your method section, which is due this week, and uh, what it needs to entail in order to get full credit for the assignment. Uh, the method section is a main section of an empirical article. We have uh, three key subsections, participants, measures, and procedures. We talked about participants. We've been talking about measures. So you need to have all three of the measures listed that you're going to be including in your study. So this should match up with the research proposal that you submitted at the end of week one. You have a categorical demographic variable uh, that you begin with. That's your first independent variable. You need to include all of the response options and the percentage of participants in each of those categories. Um, then you need to have both of the, uh, the continuous variables. So this is your second independent variable and your uh, dependent variable, both of which are being created uh, from multiple survey items. So we begin by describing uh, the, 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 the variable, the measure you're going to be using. It includes the name of it, the uh, name of that measure, uh, the response options, an example, the, uh, the, how many points there are on the scale, reliability and validity evidence from a previous study. And we move into the factor analysis. So this is going to be very similar to what you did last week in creating a composite score. So we have a level one heading, level two heading, level three heading is the uh, the, the depression, the, uh, the variable. And then we have a level four heading, uh, which is going to be each part of the analysis of this variable. So factor analysis, you're going to say an exploratory factor analysis was conducted to examine the factor structure of the scale. So we want it to be unidimensional. Right, that's called a factorial validity, or it's an element of factorial validity, that if we say these items represent depression, that they all represent one thing. If they represent four different um, constructs, then uh, we don't have clarity about what we're measuring. So you walk through the factor analysis process, your eigenvalue table, uh, your scree plot, your component matrix, you're going to discuss all of these. Uh, again, following, go ahead and look at the example, sort of follow that format. Um, and then you move into your reliability analysis. So this is another level four heading. Uh, where you're going to give us Chrome box alpha. You'll interpret that. Um, so if it's 0.8 or above, that's good. If 0.7, it would be uh, adequate or acceptable. And then uh, your distribution of composite scores, you'll actually create uh, the composite scores, give us a histogram, give us some descriptive statistics, uh, and describe what we are looking at. So it should look something like this. Make sure you rename when you create that variable, make sure you rename it so you have a meaningful label underneath your, your histogram. Uh, finally, for this subsection, you're, you will repeat the process for your second composite variable. So there's three variables in your study. Uh, in this example, it's religious preference, depression, and then this one hasn't been written out but you'd have a third variable as well. On yours, don't write variable three, put the actual name of the variable. So if this were um, altruism, you would put altruism, not variable three. And you'd repeat this entire process, right, from here all the way down with the description, uh, the factor analysis, reliability analysis, the distribution of composite scores. You'd repeat all of this with your third variable in order to get full credit. Finally, we have the procedure. So uh, how were, were the surveys administered? Right, what was this process? Um, this is just an example. This is not what happened in this case. So these data that you're working with were uh, collected uh, from OPS students and CBU, they were administered online. So it was an anonymous online survey. And students completed the survey for extra credit. So these were students in research methods classes. They were uh, um, uh, college students, psychology majors, and uh, they completed them anonymously online for extra credit. Now some people will ask, well, how am I supposed to know what the procedures were? I just told you. So this doesn't have to be long or drawn out, uh, but these were not administered at school or in class. They were administered online. They were not during regular class time. They were outside of class, and uh, they were administered, again, anonymously for extra credit. All right, so this is what your method section should look like. Uh, make sure you take a look at the rubric. Refer back to the uh, survey item list as necessary so you can see which articles to look at. These have all been provided for you on Blackboard. Uh, there is one exception. If you decide to use, or if you've decided to use uh, the last uh, scale here, religious conflict. It's going to look a little bit different. So um, there's the uh, the multidimensional measure of religiousness, spirituality. 
Okay, and this has many different subscales, and we have a few of them included here: daily spiritual experiences, private religious practices, religious support, religious conflict. So the there's sort of this broader religious support scale that had different subgroups: uh, these three, these three, and these three. Uh, these six sort of all go together, as you'll see that when you run the factor analysis, if you if you were to use this scale, um, these th uh, three factors separately. So this really should be its own subscale: religious conflict. In the literature, this one hasn't been examined on its own. Okay, so it's not been reported separately. So I still want you to be able to use it if you're interested in this, this construct. So what you'll do if you use this is to cite the reliability and validity evidence uh, for this scale, the religious support scale. So you would give us, uh, again, you would describe it, give us a sample item, the number of response options, what they are, what the anchors are, fairly often it never and then you would say something to the effect of uh, what's written right here. Validity and reliability information has not been reported separately. Um, however, a related measure, the religious support measure, has demonstrated good psychometric uh, characteristics. Um, and then you would cite this study for validity and reliability evidence. So if you look on page 415, you can see the internal reliability of this scale and see how it's uh, been correlated with other uh, measures of spirituality and religiosity. So that would be the one exception. Um, if, uh, if you want to use this one, you'll have to, uh, you have to cite uh, the evidence for this scale here. OK, if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, take your time with this, uh, but make sure you have it in. Uh, by the end of the week, uh, there will be a late point deduction if it's submitted past the deadline, and you can submit it for up to five days. Um, once in a while, a student will not submit any of these sections, introduction, the method, the results, and the very last week of class, they'll, they'll try to submit everything all at once and think, oh, well, I'll get credit for all these sections too, uh, but, but you will not. You want to make sure you submit this on time. The purpose is so that I can give you the feedback to make sure uh, everything looks good before you get to the final, uh, your final submission. All right, uh, good luck with this, and let me know if you have any questions.